everyone, welcome. It is time for Tuesdays with Tina. We're talking positive aspirations. What happens when they happen? What does it look like and what should we do when they do happen? So welcome everyone, welcome in uh, to this Tuesday, March 5th as we are going through and discussing positive aspirations and what to do. I've got Instagram over here. Hello, Instagram friends. Happy to see you. And Facebook friends over there. Happy to see you guys as well. So uh, thanks for being in here today. And if you're watching the recording, um, I'm happy to have you here as well. Um, so today's topic is does come from some viewers, some listeners uh, that to the Tuesdays with Tina. And I love it. Sometimes some of you guys are new and are hopping in for a period of time of life. And some of you have been uh, faithful friends and followers for such a long time. And I appreciate it. But this one comes because somebody asked about a positive aspiration when doing their injections, especially like a mandibular block. Why is that happening? And then also what, how to correct it and what to look for and all the things about a positive aspiration. You know, and, and this is a really important aspect to be thinking about because it's such a huge safety aspect, right? It's a huge safety aspect when it comes to local anesthesia delivery uh, because if we go ahead and inject and we have a positive aspiration where we are like, we know that we're in a blood vessel, if we've asked or if we fail to aspirate and go ahead and inject and we're in the blood vessel, we're putting all that solution right into the patient's bloodstream and really challenging their system, giving them an opportunity to have a local anesthetic toxic overdose. And nobody wants that. You guys don't want that. I know you don't want it at all. Uh, that's just that's just more paperwork <laughs> and not kind to your patient. But you know, you know, when you live in a life where you're like, oh gosh, nobody wants to deal with it. So we aspirate to make sure that we're not gonna deposit solution into our patient's bloodstream. So we're not stressing their a uh, whole entire cardiovascular system and the neural system and causing a potential local authentic overdose and medical emergency. So uh, when you do that, and if you do happen to get a positive aspiration, one of the qu big questions that I get is, one, do I need to change out my cartridge, my needle? How do I know when do I need to pull out? And I was like, I'll just say this, when in doubt, go ahead and pull out. <laughs> and everything but uh anyways you want to go ahead and just go ahead and uh, withdraw if you are unsure if it's a positive aspiration where it's so much so that it clouds the the anesthetic cartridge where you can't see anymore go ahead and withdraw if you aren't sure if it's enough still go ahead withdraw change everything out sometimes you can get like a little wormy wisp that comes in through there um thank you for laughing at my silly joke um sometimes you get the little wormy wisp that comes up and if you rotate and you can pull back on your thumb ring again and, and aspirate again a little bit more just like it doesn't take a big huge pull back see it's just a little pull back i don't know if you can even see just a little bit of negative pressure um if you do that and you rotate your syringe and aspirate again it comes clear you you should be able to see that clearly okay so if you're ever like in doubt if there's too much blood in the cartridge to be able to see just pull out okay so there's that now especially with the mandibular block uh, your PSA and an incisive, those are gonna be your three injections that are most likely to get a positive aspiration with. Friends, I will say uh, this week, uh, I had a student doing an AMSA injection and one of the lowest rates of positive aspirations you can get, <laughs> boom, it just flew right on into that syringe. So even our palatal injections with a very low rate of a positive aspiration, you can still get those. So just letting you know. Um, when you do get a positive aspiration and you've, and you've decided to change everything out, what you want to do is change your insertion site. So depending upon the injection, that could be maybe like a mandibular block, you're going to go a little superior, a little higher to where you were before. Uh, one, that helps you get to the correct um, angulation of height so you can be along the nerve because if you go lower, you have a chance of, of getting closer to that lingula, the little bony outcropping that's on right next to the mandibular foramen and you can miss the nerve so you want to go a little higher that way then also like usually gravity does its work and you know the blood starts to move in south so we take our needle go north go a little bit higher 
With your PSA injection, what you want to do is uh, really take a look in the area, make sure, and or, or the incisive, look at the area, make sure you don't have a hematoma developing, and you're just going to usually probably go a little more lateral and maybe behind where that uh, where you first inserted to avoid uh, getting near that uh, offended blood vessel. Okay, so those are going to be some of the corrections that you make. Now I will say I had someone say that. Uh, reach out to me say, hey, I get a positive aspiration on a regular basis with my mandibular blocks. What am I doing wrong? And if it's one of those things, it's hard to say without looking at what in your technique, right? You have, I have to, I or somebody that's very knowledgeable and skilled would need to look to see exactly what you're doing. But I just want to remind you, uh, when you're doing your mandibular blocks, stay nice and close to that pterygomandibular raffae and you know, try to stay level with that mandibular uh, uh, occlusal plane at near the bite line, okay? So you wanna be, try to be right up, right there near the commissure, follow the bite line, which is also in line with that mandibular foramen, in line with this little, little groove, this little notch there as well. Sorry, got some weird awkward lighting on here on Facebook, sorry friends. All right, so that's how some of the questions about uh, positive aspirations and how those come through. All right. So to recap, if you do get a positive, one, we want to aspirate. Aspirations are good. This is a good thing. If you get a positive aspiration, it's not a bad thing. It really isn't. If you get a positive aspiration, you just know that you were uh, in a spot where there was a blood vessel and you just need to pull out and reposition. And if you're not sure if there's so, enough blood in there where you need to change out your cartridge or change out your needle or both, uh, when in doubt, pull out, change it out. Okay, so good rule of life. And then you um, want to just make sure you're inserting in a different location. Now, also, it's possible that you could have a hematoma develop when you have a positive aspiration. Pretty low, but it's possible. So just make sure that you apply some good firm pressure, especially like if when you withdraw and you can see that there's uh, blood uh, on the outer portion of the tissue, like especially with palatal injections, incisives, really famous to see a little bit of bleeding happening on an incisive, or not an incisive, on an NP in nasal palatine right by the incisive foramen. Pretty common to see a little post-bleeding, injection bleeding there, or with a greater palatine, pretty common to see some post-injection bleeding there. Apply a little bit of pressure, cotton swab two by two, a little bit of pressure that will help um, to, with any of that, okay? All right, friends, um, quick one for you here today. It's been, it was a great, great busy uh, day today and yesterday. Got to work with uh, my hygiene students, second year students yesterday, doing lots of their skills testing and competencies and, and getting to industry anesthesia and nitrous. It was a lot of fun. And today, the first year students getting to work with some of their patients, you know, their first few clinical sessions. Remember, remember when you got to see your very first few patients, like how nervous you were like, Oh my gosh, am I going to seat them in the chair the right way? <laughs> oh, it's so cute. And, and then, and then you, you get over those nerves and new nerves that join in. So, uh, so friends, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, Things to be on the lookout. Uh, I will be with today's RDH at the end of the month doing a medical emergencies course for them. So be on the lookout for today's RDH course registration if you want to do a live virtual uh, course. They've got a, a whole day set aside and I get to be one of the speakers on medical emergencies for them. Awesome organization. Always excited to be one of their, one of their speakers for their events. And then um, let's see, I will be uh, at the Oregon Dental Conference talking with some uh, individuals there. And I think I, I've got more other things happening, but for the most part, I get to stay home. I'm not traveling. I won't be flying across the nation for the month of March. I will be back uh, doing that uh, after the rest of the year. But for the month of March, I get to stay home, which is kind of nice. So with that, friends, uh, the quote was from Albert Einstein. And I loved it, and I'm going to misquote it, but the essence was, um, if you, if there's something you really want, it's the dreamers that have big dreams, that have the passion that get it done, and it's rarely the ones that have all the facts that ever make it happen. So if you have big dreams, go for it. And if you sit there and you're overanalyzing, overanalyzing, you're waiting for all the facts to happen, it's not going to happen. 
You know, there's a rule of thumb. I've heard people say the 51% or the 70% rule. If you've got 51% of the information or 70% of the information, just move forward and at make and make the decision and go for it. So whatever it is, if you have a big dream out there and you've got the passion for it, go make it happen. And you never know what what might happen in your life and who you will impact. And as long as you get to, you're doing it from the heart and you're serving others, I think you'll be successful. And, and that's what I'm doing as I, I do this from my heart. And I appreciate all of you guys. And thank you for sharing this information. And um, again, if you've missed any of the Teacher Tina's uh, on Tuesdays with Tina, I have the Teacher Tina RDH YouTube channel where I'm putting some of our more my most recent ones on there and a few archived ones if I find them so that I found pretty interesting and fun. So until next week, friends, and if again, if there's a topic that spurs your interest, that if there's something that you really want to learn more about, it doesn't even have to be anesthesia related, friends, even though I love it and I that's what I'm known for. We can talk about anything. So I will see you guys next Tuesday. I'm going to go eat dinner. Okay. Bye.